Hello, art people. We're going to do a really, really pretty animal today who illustrates focused listening skills. I'll show you on my share screen. Um, right here we have a pheasant flying in, in the meadow with all these beautiful stripes on her tail. We won't be doing a flying picture in my example today, but I wanted you to see how beautiful that God made all these little little U shapes and then these little diamond shapes and just the gorgeous colors. Notice the beak. Let's do another share. Um, how about this one? He's up and down. You can see he has short wings, um, long, long tail, and his beautiful colors. Okay, and then here's the one we're gonna do right here. All right. This is a photo by Hank Christensen. I found this on Google Photos, looking up pheasant. And I just love this one because look at how he has polka dots right here. Polka dots here, there's circles for his eyes, different colors. His beak, notice it's a triangle, but then he has this little rectangle right there, this triangle right here, it's a point, another little triangle right there. So just observing, he has this, it's a ring-necked pheasant, has this white collar. Isn't that gorgeous? These feathers here are like little triangles, and these are like little rounded Vs or Us. You see that? And then, the, then here's the medium size, and then the larger size with these just beautiful little shapes. Isn't that cool? So I thought we would do this pheasant because Wow, he's just fantastic. Right, ready? So grab your Sharpie and your thick piece of paper. I happen to have acrylic paint today and a bunch of brushes, fat for large spaces, skinny for small spaces. And I just wanted, you can use watercolor or colored pencils, whatever you want, but if you use acrylic paint, then make sure you have some water, a little drying paper towel for your brushes, and maybe a paper plate or something for your palette. I have white, black, so I can make tints and shades. A shade is any of these hues with a little bit of black in it. That makes a shade. A tint is any of these hues with a little bit of white in it. That makes a tint. So I have a golden and yellow, a, a green, and a red for my three colors. You can pick other colors if you want, blue, red, and yellow. Um, I like three colors because a limited palette um, just adds, I don't know, a richness, a deepness, and it's fun to work with. So if you're gonna use acrylic paint, that's what I have. Water, paper towel, palette, brushes, and paint. Let's get started with the lines. Get your Sharpie. I think we'll start, is this the top of my paper? Can you see it? We're gonna start, if this is the middle of my paper, I'm gonna use in the second half, I'm gonna put an eyeball about right here. And inside my eyeball, I wanna always make sure I make a, a small white circle before I do my black circle. And then with a pheasant, it'll have another color around it. That'll be fun. Okay. Super cool with the pheasant. It almost looks like it has a sideways heart. Um, you can watch me first. I start under the eye and I go out, up, and then instead of a circle, I keep going and make kind of a like the bottom of a sideways heart. And then this part's going to be lower, like it's going to be a lopsided heart. So after I get that side, can you see how it's kind of like a and it come in and do that. That's what I saw on our example of a pheasant for its <laughs> little, I don't know, red part. Once you have this almost circle, and then it, and then the straight line, and then this almost circle, and then it kind of comes in. You got that? We'll start, we'll do the beak over here over here. His beak is going to have this nice curve on the top, 
and then I maybe mean, not that curve, and then um, a little flatter on the bottom. So um, on the top, it has like this little rectangly spot. And I just do that, but his beak, his beak has a white spot. It's just pretty cool and odd. All right, that's what I saw when I was looking. We're gonna take his forehead and kind of go up and then touch the top of that red part. And then kind of flat, kind of come out here, come down. And then here's the secret. When I think of focused listening, this bird is gonna be our example of focused listening. He has these little, uh, these are called auriculars, little, um, kind of like the horned owl has these feathers that stick up. These are, are called auriculars and they are, um, they cover up, they protect his turbulent sound so he can hear very carefully the sounds he needs to hear. So his auriculars, these cool, and we'll draw a little smaller ones here that are kind of sticking out on the other side of his head. These cover up, um, all of the distraction noises so that he can listen well to what he needs to listen to. Let's do the front of his neck over here, coming out this way. And then before he has a collar, it's gonna be these little U's. Little U's. Okay. Because he has a white collar that comes down here. All right, like that. Okay, I forgot to look at the video to see if my, is my hand in the way? I'll scoot over. All right, so he has, um, he has this dark green or blue color here, red in here, and it's gonna have polka dots. And then this is his white collar. After the white collar, he has um, his kind of rich, coppery, sienna brown color down here. You can do whatever you want on yours, but we're gonna do the end of his little belly chest and then starting his back, okay? So now we have an outline for what to put his, to do his feathers. Remember his feathers have that like rounded little V's? Well, we're gonna fill in a bunch of little V's up here and here they're pointy on the back. All this pattern creates, just makes him so interesting. I don't even know if my um, acrylic paints will cover over all this, but I think it's important to kind of understand um, what patterns you're gonna go be going for. After we fill in this area with small feathers, small U's, and over here, V's, I noticed our picture had these almost like medium square, and they go in this kind of curve. So large squares are gonna be down here, and they curve up, and they join with the bees. So I just gave, just so I could remember, where is everything? A couple here, a couple there, a couple there. Now I'm just gonna fill it in. Oh, I just looked at the, <laughs> you can see some of that. So now I'm gonna fill it in with the U's here. And then V's over there. And I'm just gonna go in rows that start here and go that way, here and go that way. All right. It's like shingles, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Just enjoy this. You might want to put on some pretty jazz music <laughs> while you connect them all. I go from medium, maybe medium large, and then to really large. Right? Pretty cool. Let me see. It's kind of fun. I don't know if you're working with. Auntie Anne or Aunt Amy, this is your mom. 
<laughs> for somebody else, but I hope you enjoy this nice little pattern making. Still creating patterns. The story that goes with um, the pheasant for undistractive focus to hearing what God wants. Jesus did this. Um, he noticed who touched his cloak in Luke 8. 8 verses 40 to 48. You can even go to your Bible app and listen to the story. I love the message version or for kids the living version. Both of those are really great um, storytelling the listening versions. And you can hear the story of when Jesus was like, whoa, who touched me? He was alert to exactly what he needed to listen to from the Holy Spirit. God is like, I have a mission for each of you. Every single child and adult was created with purpose that we would listen to our creator and live in the beauty that he's called us to live in. And so Jesus was like, okay, Lord, what do you want from me? And he heard from the Holy Spirit that he was there to help um, heal this woman who had faith. Who touched me, he said, when he was in the middle of a crowd. He was carefully um, paying attention to what he needed to. He wasn't distracted by the all the people smashing around him. He could have been irritated by the smells and the stink or the yelling. Or the, you know what I mean? Like, we get distracted so easily. But Jesus wasn't. Hey, don't forget, the pheasant has these cute polka dots up here. So cute. I love them. Okay. That's random. Okay. So there you go. We have all the shapes we need for adorable, beautiful pheasant that the Lord created. I'm gonna get out paints and let you finish. Okay, I was thinking it would be super cool to do like a stormy dark gray um, sky up here and maybe like a far away little tree line behind here, like here's our horizon line. And then maybe in the foreground, some long green grass. What do you think? So I'm gonna start with the sky. And I'm just gonna turn this baby around. Oh, by the way, in order for our image to stand out, we'll do bright colors on our bird and then muted colors in the background. And so there's a contrast. So I, if I water down the colors for the background and then don't water down the colors for the bird, my bird will probably be pretty vibrant, right? Well, I'm gonna turn them around and I have my palette here. Since I'm gonna do, Kind of bigger spaces. Maybe I'll do this. I don't know. I'm gonna grab some water because I want my colors to be more muted. I'll probably be putting a, a bunch of water on my paper, but first for stormy clouds, I just wanna get my black. Can you see that? My my black a little watered down and a little white for grays. Oh, that's gonna be so fun. Okay, before I get going too far. I'm gonna use my water and just take my brush and go around my beautiful pheasant. Give it a horizon line around there. And I'm just gonna get my watercolor paper wet. Paper wet around the pheasant with my fat brush. Yeah, I'm going all the way to the edges. Pretty that way. And I'm going to try to match my horizon line from that side on this side. I'm not super concerned that it's straight because I think I'm going to be covering it up. Actually, that'll remind that reminds me. Maybe we want some of that gray to be all the way down there behind the grass. It'd be a great background color. Okay. So, I'm just I'm just going for it. I'm just putting this light gray all in the background. 
All right. Now that my paper is wet, I can dip in my paintbrush into some. Is that, is that focusing? Not focusing. Here. Come on, camera. Meet my hand. There we go. And I'm just going to give some stormy clouds by grabbing some black and then some white and adding it into my watery sky. Water. White and black. All right, enjoy. You could even spray it. Um, with your brush, with your um, spray bottle. I just want a stormy sky. And then it's darker near the edge, near the top, right? Usually, I'm gonna do this and then Add more water. I have this handy dandy spray bottle. It's nice. Okay. Oh yeah. Starting to rain on the plains. I love it. If you don't want your paper to curl, you can always just spray the back of your paper so it's also wet and then it expands. So I just sprayed the back of my paper so this part will not bend so much. Oh, that's so cool. What if we sprayed and then we lift it? Look, it's raining. The clouds are starting to drop rain. What? That's so pretty. Okay, have fun with your rainy day. It's gonna be such a great contrast to this bright bird. A little bit more dark clouds up here. More white, more black. Come on, they're moody. Do you think that, do you think that Jesus only listened to the Holy Spirit when he felt happy? Do you think even when there was rain clouds in his life and people were grumpy around him that he listened to the Holy Spirit. He had his focused listening feathers on. <laughs> like a pheasant. Oh my goodness. I hope you have fun with this. You can add purple to your dark sky if you want. But I limited my palette, so I only have I only have red, green, and yellow. You might want purple, green, and yellow. Come on, that would be really, really pretty. Okay. I'm gonna let that dry before I move on to um, this part in the foreground and then a little bit of tree line. I, well, if I don't care that it's blurry, I can add it while it's wet. Do you guys care? Okay, you don't care? Good. I think the background should be nice and blurry. I'm adding a little bit of water to my acrylic paint. This is green and I don't want it to be so bright so I'm adding some black. What does that make it? If I add black, what is it called? A tint or a shade? Yeah, if you add black, it's a shade. So I just added black. Don't know if you can tell, probably not tell very much, but I'm gonna do a tree line. It's kind of like that. And it's on the wet, and I'm starting to really love it. So that's far away. He's kind of in a meadow, but there's like trees in the distance. Whoa, that totally reminds me of when Bapa does trees. You guys remember? He would just kind of wiggle his brush and then go poke, poke, up like that. And then it was trees in the distance. I'm gonna add a little more black to my green just to make it a little darker and do it one more time because the black when i add black into it it um then it matches the black up there oh look i dropped my brush <laughs> okay now i'm gonna do some um yellow make some yellow green for long grasses because i want it to be like a dried up yellow um, dried grass, like up here. 
It's going to be like that. But my paint's been sitting there a little too long, I think. All right. When I do grass, I start from the bottom and go up. Getting my paper wet because the background, and my background's going to be muted compared to the colors on my um, resin. Okay, after we get some grass in our foreground, we can always go back and add more later. I just want to cover all that color. Okay, I really love that yellow color. I want some more of the yellow on this side. It's the ends of yellow grass. You guys, this is so fun. I hope you're having fun too. Okay, our pheasant is in a meadow with dry yellow grass, green forest in the background, and a very smoky, rain cloudy sky. Now I've used my green and my yellow, and I'm going to clean my brush and get ready for some very awesome pheasant colors. Red up here, whitish there, white here, and then dark green in there and then we'll mix our own reddish brown for down here all right when i dry my brush oops i left some things on it i i swish it in the water oh, you see that? You see that? i swish it in the water take the drips off and then I just kind of roll my brush on a paper towel so that I'm not smashing the edge. I want to keep that nice tip. So I just roll it like that and then it's all ready to go for the next time I'll use it. All right, you guys ready? You have red, green, and yellow. I'm gonna refresh it and paint it up. Okay, I'm gonna make a tint with my white. I get a little white from the side and then pull a little bit of yellow from the side of that and mix them together. Is this focusing? There we go. That's called a tint when you add white to a color. So see it's creamier than that yellow, the white. I'm gonna use this for his beak. I'm just using the tippy tip of my brush I got my brush wet first, so that's why it's a little easy to use. I'm gonna use just the tippy tip. I added more white to this part. I'm kind of leaving my black lines, my black Sharpie lines. Um, like basically when you use Sharpie lines so that you can kind of see your shapes, a lot of times you accidentally paint over them and then after everything's dry, it really does a lot to go back over it um, and then do your Sharpie lines again. And sometimes you can have your mom do that part for you if you're super little and... Okay. All right. Ready? Let's see. So I have white and yellow for my beak. I'm looking at my picture. I'm gonna wash, wash off my brush, rub it on the bottom. I take the drips off drippy and then I roll my brush on the paper towel to get it clean and ready for the next one. Maybe I'll just use this white as is with the tiniest touch of yellow and paint in this white part. Then it'll be not just paper showing through. I don't know why that's important but it seems to be important. Like so you're Painting seems finished. Sometimes I've left the paper there and then I've been like, huh, white paint actually, it feels like I painted it. Maybe because you can see brush strokes. I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna go for that red part. What do you think? Oh, this part right here has some white. I'm looking at the messy. Oh, okay. All right, wanna do the red part? Let's do the red part. 
to wash it like this, take the drips off from my brush. And I'm grabbing some red. I wonder if I should add black to it. What do you guys think? I'm adding a little drip of water so it's smoother. Should just be bright red. Okay, here it goes. Uh, when I paint, I use the tippy tip so I can control it and then move around. If I was really amazing, I would put like a golden um, circle where that white is. Can you guys hear um, Zach and Joel in the background? They're creating something, I think, in Minecraft. Can create All right. You guys to make brown, you can use a little bit of green and then red. If it's too dark, when you mix it together, add white. If it's just green color, add some more red. So red, green, and white. If you add a little yellow, Depends on what your green is made of, but it should make a brown. I'm sorry, that keeps coming out of focus. Can you even see that? Say brown. All right, well, all these squares are brown, and if you need more control with the tip of your brush, you might have to dip it in water or get a smaller brush. Here with wetter. I'm going to do this and then add a black dot on the bottom of them later. So enjoy as you paint in your feathers. Just be patient and enjoy the process. It's going to look so pretty. You can make your brown lighter with white or darker with black, but take time to make your brown. You can make brown with purple and orange, a tiny bit of purple with a lot of orange, or um, sort of equal amounts of green and red, depending on your red. Um, if your red needs more yellow in it, red. Ooh, look at that. My brown's turning more yellowish and golden. So how cool is it if your brown is just different colors? Add a little yellow to it. Do a few feathers, add a little white to it, do a few feathers, add a little black to it, do a few feathers, add a little green to it, do a few feathers, and see all the different browns you can make. Wow, this is going to be so fun. Okay, I'm going to pause it and see you in a second. I'm still adding little pieces of red or yellow into my browns and I just dip my paintbrush into water to make it watery but just a little more red and I just I love it I was thinking about how you know the point of our um, focused listening bird how God helps him not to be distracted by wind turbulence like what distracts us what would help us to really like, you know, if the Holy Spirit is like, I really want you to forgive so-and-so, you know, yeah, they were, they were mean to you on the playground. Yeah, they pushed you, they kicked you, whatever, you know, like, um, and God's like, I want you to smile at them. You can tell the teacher, but think of something kind. And do you, are you tuned in to what the Holy Spirit's saying? Are you like, going to go ahead and just be part of the calling that God has called you to in, at your school or in your family with your little brother or your little sister are you going to just um listen carefully and then just obey the holy spirit and see what adventure he has for you it's <laughs> crazy you know it's the holy spirit when he tells you to do something your your human nature is like uh, i don't want to <laughs> but if you're like lord i just want the adventure you have for me then as soon as god says go do it do that kind thing say that kind word you're just all over it, and he gives you exactly what you need, that energy to go do that kind, loving thing, because you know it's not from you. You're like, you know what? That voice was not 
my sin nature that's, you know, always wanting me to do whatever's easy and comfortable for myself. Hey, there's a verse actually in the Bible about being doing easy, comfortable. It's um, Matthew 26, 41. And Jesus is like, keep alert and keep praying. You know what praying is? It's asking for good things. It's saying, it's, it's talking to the Lord saying, God, would you do these good things for that person? Oh, he would, I don't know why he was hurting me, but God, would you do good? Would you bless him through me? Would you bless him through someone else? Would you do your awesome thing in that person's life? And you're just calling out blessing or your brother, your sister, your mom, your dad, whoever's in your life that God put there. You guys, I don't know if you can see this, but like every brown that I'm doing, I just, I'm like loving each one. And I have a really chunky, like, like my brush doesn't even go in all the corners. Oh, look, by the way, if you make a mistake, look at that. I just dropped my brush right in the white spot. I'll probably go forward and pick up white with a clean brush and go over that after it's dry. Just totally fun, no problem, art time. No expectations, and then you enjoy it. All the surprises. So what are you gonna do? What are you gonna commit and think about how you're gonna have focused listening to the Holy Spirit? What helps you to be focused? Is it um, making sure that you open your Bible and read it every day? Just a little piece. And you know, for me, one way that helps me be focused is my Bible, I try to keep like colored pencils nearby or a pencil. When I read my Bible, I just, you know, I'll, I'll be reading and I'll be like, I'm going to, I'm going to hide, I'm going to just underline that. I want to remember that we wait for the blessed hope, the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. I was like, I'm going to remember Jesus Christ is coming back someday. Or those who have trusted in God may be careful to devote themselves to doing what is good. Okay, one day I highlight that with my little yellow marker. And you know what? I got my journal out and I wrote just that one little short phrase down. Why? Because I wanted to have focused listening. I wanted to remember that little piece of God's word for my day. And that was one of my ways to help me focus. I write down just one sentence or one phrase when God is like, forgive, I wrote that word down. Or do good, I write that down. I think, Lord, how am I going to do good today? And the Lord blesses that. He gives me so much joy in serving him and knowing him when I have, I have focused listening skills. All right, you guys, pretty soon all this is going to be done and I'm going to put some dark green in here and the same for my auriculars. Okay, for this part, you can actually have a beautiful blue in here if you want. I don't have it. I just have my green color and I'm going to use green plus a little bit of black and a little bit of white. And you can use a medium brush and fill in this whole green area. Okay, I finished my green um, up here. It's almost dry and I'm going to do the very last part of my little um, keen, sensitive, focused, listening pheasant by adding, I'm gonna share screen with our pheasant here real quick. That's the photograph from Google. Is that it? All right. So right here, I was just thinking, let's add those little black shapes and we can do a simplified version but how cute would that be and we'll add a little black up here in his in the eye area okay so ready you can get your sharpie you can also just use black paint if you want but i'm gonna go ahead and color in this part because i colored in the eye um you could do this black or you could leave it white. Pheasants have the same color beak right there or they have black. You can do either one. And then for the shape down here, what I thought would be easy on these, um, on these 
rectangle shapes is do like a little, um, what is that? A little hill on the bottom and you can just do little hills on the bottom of your rectangle shapes and that'll do it. Or you could do a hill plus a little V and that would be like a tiny little V on the bottom of each hill. See that? Tiny little V on the bottom of each hill. So you can do that on some of these larger um, rectangles and don't forget, if you wanna do a really great finishing job, go over any of these um, Sharpie lines that you painted over just to make them dark again. Like that. I do that for my kindergartners. I go over their own Sharpie lines after school just to make it vibrant and dark again, you see? Super beautiful. Oh, I can't wait. So do you remember? What's your pheasant gonna remind you? Focused listening to the Holy Spirit and um, tuning in to God's voice. He takes away distractions. Maybe, maybe before you do like fun things like video games, you say, God, I want to spend some time listening to you before I just do yes, things. No. And um, that can be like your little alert. You can be like, okay, every time I have cereal, I'm going to listen to God before I eat cereal. Give yourself like a little something, kind of like how pheasants are listening and they, they feel a vibration in the wind and they stop and they listen. What's gonna be your little trigger to listen to the Lord and spend a little time either in his word or listening to his voice and thinking about things and saying, God, what do you think about that? So, you know, I haven't been looking. Do you see you do a little hill and a tiny bee and it just, as that little artistic thing that God had designed already in the pheasant. I love it. It's so fun. Okay, guys. See you again next time. It sure was fun painting with you. Bye.